exponentially. It entered another trend, which is it proliferated over time exponentially. And so now combine, and, and so the risk increases as you do that, basically, from the technological perspective. The weapon's in more hands and it's more dangerous, more destructive. But now what we're talking about doing, you know, in the next few years of technologies that are in development right now, is you're talking about developing things which make nuclear weapons look like toys, almost. You're talking about nano weapons. You're talking about biological weapons. You're talking about artificial intelligence. And so those things are themselves existentially threatening technologies because nuclear weapons were the first, but they weren't the last. And so e each time you develop one of these new ones, you know, like uh, bioweapons, like nanotech, you know, it enters the same two trajectories that nuclear weapons did. That is, it proliferates and it becomes more powerful. Man, and so normalize it to the way the world is, so they have a hard time seeing what it could be. And even in, in a weird way, believing that society is organized in a natural way, like like the way we're organized is the natural way to organize. Like, right. you know, this is why I did it. And you're trying to make this point like, no, these were policy choices that people did to advantage themselves while disadvantaging others. And those policy choices can be changed. All this stuff can be changed. We don't have to be organized this way. I, I was talking to one of the politicians in, um, I think it was a People's Summit. And as we were talking, I said, look, I said, why aren't houses solar, why aren't houses independent energy, energy generators? Like, we have technology at this point where the house could be energy independent. It doesn't have to be connected to a grid. Whether you're talking about solar power or wind power, those things be in the house itself. So anytime a house is built, those things are built in a way that makes itself energy independent. If it needs additional energy for the grid, fair enough. But solar panels are getting better and solar power is getting better and that stuff is getting better, meaning that house can most likely be energy independent. We, as, as any party or any, any politics, should strive for that. If we have a problem in, in regards to energy, meaning how we're producing energy is destroying our climate, then it seems as natural as natural can be to acknowledge that from a scientific standpoint of saying, we need to do something different because what we're doing is destroying ourselves. One of these ways is, hey, let's make these energy or these houses energy independent. A, the person is not paying a bill anymore for energy because that house is essentially generating its own energy. And B, that person is a little bit more freer than what that person was before. And you expand that particular idea out to your society as a whole. How can we make people free? Now, libertarians have this cartoonish idea of freedom. Like, you know, as if you could have, you could be free and fuck everybody else. And I got mine, so I got mine, you know, as opposed to this idea of you're going to be free when everybody else is free. And their understanding of free is off. It's this idea of when you get up in the morning, you're doing what you want to do, not because you have to do it. Yes, there are going to be things you do where you work, but what work is may be something different and fundamentally different than what we consider work to be now. And ultimately, if we're being honest, many of these jobs can be automated. And any job that can be automated should be automated. I don't want a human being flipping french fries. If we have the capacity for a car to go from point A to point B, I want the car to go from point A to point B. I don't want a taxi in that car. The problem becomes us. Like, in, in this case, how we perceive it, the problem becomes us. You go to CVS, they have all these little plastic toys that nobody buys, and yet there's a bomb sitting out on the street. There was money that went into making those plastic toys. There was money went into making all this stuff that nobody's going to buy, and yet there's no money to make sure this guy's okay. The problem becomes us. We can change this. Like, I give you an example. Like, energy. Using, um, like, piezoelectric meters on the ground itself, so when a person walks, it captures the energy of that particular person and uses it for certain things in the society. Our technology is phenomenal in regards to what we can do with this technology. And we use it purely for the sake of profit at the expense of everybody else. It is an amazing thing that we allow our society to do this. Not to mention, we, when you add that, like you said, an existential threat of what we're doing is destroying ourselves. You have scientists with their hair on fire saying, look at what you're doing to the world. Look at what you're doing to the environment. The climate is collapsing. Your habitat is collapsing. Nothing changes. We have the technology. Nothing changes. All of this stuff becomes a choice. It's, it's, I guess the question becomes, how do you get people to realize that the way that they're living is fundamentally a choice and that this choice can be different? Yeah. And it's like, that is the hardest thing in the world to do. I think that uh, it's essential. People have to understand how we could live. That's essential. Because only when people understand how we could live do people 
really comprehend the the, the magnitude of that theft, yeah. you know, of yeah, what yeah. this system is. I also <laughs> think that no, the, sorry, I think that the twentieth century was defined by economies of scale and by consolidation, uh, and it was defined by the fact that you know you had the industrial revolution. And it was cheaper to produce on the margins uh, for each unit of good produced. It was cheaper to produce uh, if you were consolidated, basically. I think the, the 21st century, uh, thanks to a lot of the technologies that we've developed, uh, like 3D printing, uh, distributed uh, energy production, rooftop solar, all of these different things, for that reason, um, it, I think the 21st century has the potential to be the century of distributed uh, production and decentralization. Distributed energy production, uh, manufacturing could mostly be done on an individual level in the way that 3D printing is advancing. You know, you could produce all of your, your silverware, your clothes, basically. Yeah. Uh, you could produce all kinds of things like that at home instead of going to, you know, and that fundamentally changes kind of the, like the retail model that we have, if you have one device that can basically produce every appliance and household item, yeah. you know? And so that that is the potential kind of on one side uh, for a totally distributed system of operation. And the same thing could happen on the political level, you know, yeah. where you could have uh, potentially with blockchain voting in the future, you have much more direct democracy. You know, uh, you yeah. have forms where people are voting uh, online on more uh, policy directions, you know, in addition to uh, to government representatives, you know, so that like that is the potential that decentralization and that uh, and that distributed kind of uh, model for the 21st century, you know, if we again, if we manage to you to kind of intelligently man manage and utilize the application of that technology, as opposed to letting it, you know, kind of go haywire in this conflict driven system. You got to get people over the hurdle. I mean, I, honestly, it's like you, you. People are an aggregation of all their experiences and things that they encounter. Meaning, like, um, if, if somebody grew up in a Japanese society, in you know samurai times, they're going to behave that particular way. There may be a range of their personality, meaning an aspect of them that's them, but that's only really accepting or rejecting the elements in that particular society, making that person who that person is. Yeah, people only know what's being invested in them and making small permutations against the thing that they're, they're associated with. Part of this, part of the hardest part, is getting people to realize that your society doesn't have to be this way. Like maybe not necessarily Star Trek, we might not necessarily have these um, auto generators right now, but when you're talking about how things should be arranged, the moment that you accept that we live on a ball hurling through the cosmos, and that planet is a living planet that we ourselves completely rely upon for our life force. If anything happens to that planet, it's also going to happen to us. The planet will be here. We may not. And it is irrational, as irrational could be, to take on any system, be it capitalism or anything else, that is destroying your planet. Like the moment that you say there's something higher than a human being and there's something more important than a human being, you've essentially raised something that's unreal. Um, beyond your own level, like it's an amazing fucking thing that this ideology that we take on. You're right, like you think of, there should be no poverty, there should be no hunger. You have a situation where people have so much junk and so much stuff that they need advertising. They put billions and billions of dollars in advertising to get you to buy more stuff. So it's like we've, we've saturated you with stuff to the normal level that you as a human being would accept. So now we've taken on psychology in order to get you to buy stuff that you don't need a profit. Then you have this odd Ponzi scheme that completely ignores the fact that you have a, a finite planet. So on this finite planet, they've come up with a Ponzi scheme that would allow them to get stuff, harvest stuff from the planet, put that stuff into devices that you give people, and those devices falling apart, meaning they need to harvest more stuff from the planet to put in more devices that you buy that eventually gets thrown away. They do this because now you have this Ponzi scheme where, well, we need to continue to make more of this. If this lasts for 10 years, then you're not going to buy one for 10 years, and all of these people are going to lose their jobs. You want people to lose their jobs? It's like, no, but I also don't want people to have in the pull stuff out the ground, like, like minerals and, 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 and um, you know, like let's say you make a computer and then you throw that computer away in two years. 
just because that company wants to continue to make computers and want to employ people who make those computers. And you're like, but wait a minute, you have a finite planet. You're, you're talking about throwing away resources, model coin, even though you have a finite planet. It doesn't make sense. Like, I'm just saying that the, the model itself doesn't make sense. You have people working in cases where they don't really need to work purely just for the sake of work, just to put somebody put money in other people's pocket. You could have a computer that, let's say, lasts for 10 years, and you go in and you change the inner workings of that particular computer without throwing the entirety of the computer away with the other stuff inside of it being recycled. In this case, you're not just pulling stuff from the ground just for the sake of pulling stuff from the ground. You're not keeping somebody on a job that doesn't necessarily need to be on the job. You're you're living in a society that's meeting the needs of the people in a society without necessarily forcing people to do any work that they don't necessarily need to do. Like, it, it, it's almost like you, you're working just for the sake of work, just so you can work. Like, it, it's not an overarching reason to it. It's not we're working in order to make sure people have the supplies that they need, which should really be the point of, of any kind of work in a society. It's you're just working just to work. And, and it, it's, it's bizarre. It's pretending as if the planet is not finite. It's pretending, like you, you've come up with this situation where you have like um, all of the poverty and the poverty is completely unnecessary. Or you have people who don't have things that they need, even though you have factories churning out like a thousand t-shirts in a minute. Like it, it doesn't make sense. The goods and the supplies don't necessarily get to the people who need them. It gets to the people who can afford them. And that, that, that is a bizarre society to have. And we agree to it. Gabor Implicitly. has a great example uh, where he says, you know, if there's a billionaire somewhere who wants a golden toilet seat and he has the money to pay for it, you know, but then there's kind of like a starving family somewhere else, uh, you know, and they need basic, they, I mean, they need food and medical care. Where are society's resources going to go? Yeah. You know, it's amazing. The, That's amazing. Yeah. You know? And so you replicate that, you multiply that times a billion and you get our society. I mean, you, there, it's, it's, there is absolutely no connection between human needs and the distribution of resources, and that's, and it's, that, that's insane. It's yeah. insane. Six people I mean, what, has half of the wor world's wealth or has more wealth than, than the half of the world or something? Yeah, it's like, it, I think it's like five people now. Yeah, that's insane. Like, it, there's, or, yeah. or you end up in this other thing where I think, I 